Let's talk quilts. You guys know that I make a lot of quilts. I make all the quilts for the videos, like the one behind me. I also have a lot of other quilts that you guys don't see. So that all adds up to a lot of quilts. So looking at my list, it looks like so far this year I have finished 25 quilts. Now some of those are still waiting to be quilted. In a normal year, I would have quilted them as I finished them, but this year obviously everything's a little crazier than normal. Now, quilting is my job. I run this channel, I write my own quilt patterns, I submit quilts to shows, and that means that I have a lot of time to sew. But it might not be as much time as you think. Um, running this channel requires a lot of computer work that is all behind the scenes. In addition, I also have a family. I have a husband and two kids and a crazy dog. So I wanted to share with you guys my tips for being really productive when you're sewing. My number one tip is organization. So I have done a sewing room tour in the past and it has changed a little bit. I've kind of moved some stuff around, gotten some new tables, but the basic elements of my room are still the same. I keep all of my kind of projects that are ongoing in baskets and each basket holds one project no more no less and when I come into my room I pull the basket down that I'm gonna work on that day I have all the supplies that I need for that quilt I can work on it and then I put it all back in the basket and I put it back on the shelf and that means that my surfaces my work surfaces remain clear and that is key to being able to come in work quickly, get a task done, and clean up and be ready to go next time. Tip number two is establish a work triangle. Now I watch a lot of like HGTV kind of renovation shows and in those shows they always talk about the kitchen work triangle, the like fridge, sink, stove, work triangle. Your sewing room is exactly the same. You have your sewing machine, your cutting surface, and your pressing surface. And those three kind of stations are stations that you move between when you are quilting. The closer they are together and the more efficient your movement is between them, the less time you will spend moving from your machine to your pressing surface. Now I know that I have this craft room and that is a total luxury. But I have to tell you, since March, I have done maybe 10% of my sewing in this room. I've basically only sewed on camera in this room because my kids are home, which means that I am out in another room all the time. So this is where I have been doing all of my sewing since March. It is a table with my extra sewing machine and a very small space off to the side. So it is a efficient work triangle. I can get all three of the things that I need done, done right there. And it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's not a room, it's just a table. And something like this could be set up on your dining room table if you don't have a dedicated space. You just need to get the essentials right around you to move efficiently between them. Number three embrace chain piecing. Chain piecing is the best thing that ever happened to quilters. Maybe not, maybe rotary cutters, but chain piecing's great. So I talk about chain piecing a lot. There are a number of videos where I do it on quilts for you guys, but it is basically doing the same step of all your blocks at once in a row without cutting the thread on your machine. You pair two pieces of fabric, send it through your machine, pair two pieces of fabric, send it through your machine with just a little bit of thread that kind of connects them. So when you take it off your machine, when you've completed all those steps, you have this long chain of the same kind of step of block. And then you can use a chain piecing cutter like this one that I have here to very quickly slice them all apart. Now this is one that I got off Etsy and it is adorable. And it very cleverly uses an old 45 millimeter rotary blade. So you can just put it in its little holder and whack all the little threads apart really quickly. I'll put a link in the description below for the little Etsy shop that I got this. 
The next tip, number four, is prepare yourself for sewing. And that means have a fresh needle in your machine, have some bobbins wound, have a fresh blade in your rotary cutter if you're gonna be cutting fabric. A fresh blade can cut through multiple layers of fabric. Instead of doing one at a time, you can get accurate cuts more quickly and more efficiently with a sharp blade. As for bobbins, wind as many as you need for at least the session. If you are like me and you use white for basically all of your piecing, then these little bobbin savers, I wind an entire one of these full of white bobbins and it is boring but I can do it in front of my TV or with an audiobook or whatever, and I just kind of plow through and I wind however many fit in here. This is my rainbow one, but I have a white one out of my other machine. And that means that I don't have to pause to wind a bobbin in the middle of my process. I don't have to unthread my machine, wind a bobbin, rethread my machine. It's done. So I have weeks of bobbins ready to go. If you really, really hate winding bobbins, you can buy pre-wound bobbins for most machines. I've done that. It's amazing. I love it. But I'm kind of to the point where I have so many bobbins now that I should really probably wind them on my own. Tip number five, buy rulers that speed up your process. And this can be anything from a ruler that is long enough. I cut a lot of fabric off the bolt, so I have a 24 and a half inch wide ruler so that I can very quickly make easy work of yardage. If you make the same kind of block over and over, if you are the kind of person who makes eight and a half inch blocks all the time, then buy an eight and a half inch square ruler and a rotary cutting mat, and then you'll be able to trim your blocks that much faster. It's not about having every ruler out there. It's about having the ones that will work best for you. So after you quilt for a while, you'll notice a pattern. I make a lot of four and a half inch block units. So I have a four and a half inch square ruler to trim and it works great for me. So take a look at the quilts you've already made and see if they share any similarities. If you make a lot of flying geese, then you might wanna check out a ruler like this. This is the ultimate flying goose trim tool by Creative Grids. And it has all the measurements for the flying geese units. It helps you trim them quickly and accurately. And if you make a lot of flying geese like I do, then this saves me a lot of time. So don't dismiss specialty rulers like this because they may end up being a real lifesaver. Tip number six, make a sample block. If you have a new pattern that you just brought and you are so excited to break into that bundle and cut it all up, just pause for a minute and grab some scraps and make a sample block. This will help you identify any little problems that might crop up in your sewing experience. If you make your sample block according to the instructions and realize that it would be faster to make it a different way or that you wanna add a little bit of extra room so that you can trim one of your units down so they go together more smoothly, then making that sample block will help you identify those problems so that you can change the pattern going forward so that you don't have to make that fussy little mistake for all the blocks, you just make it once. So it's an upfront investment of time, but it will pay off if you can save yourself from making the same mistake on every block. A little side project, if you make all of your sample blocks from one specific bundle of fabric or one theme then eventually you're gonna be able to sew them together and get like a free quilt so that's what I do all of my sample blocks are all made from one line of fabric and until I use it up and then I sew all those blocks together tip number seven get rid of distractions I know that phone sitting over there is very tempting to me <laughs> and I could spend half of my sewing time sitting here looking at Instagram or Pinterest or texting with someone but plug it in, set it down far away from you, put it on silent, put your headphones on, listen to an audiobook or a podcast, something that isn't visually distracting, and that will help you focus on your quilting without um, checking your email 800 times like I do. Tip number eight, schedule your sewing time, or at least make it part of your daily routine. Now, obviously, I get to sew during the day, and I know a lot of you probably work during the day, but find those little chunks of time in your evening where you can run in and if your room is organized and your surfaces are clear and they're ready to work in, you can get a lot done in that little 15, 20 minutes. 
So for example, my husband and I split kind of bedtime routine time. So I take care of my daughter first, get her in bed, and then my husband takes care of my son. So just in that little 20 minute chunk of time, I can cut a bunch of fabric, I can sew a couple blocks, I can do a bunch of pressing. And if your room is organized and your surfaces are clear, then that 20 minutes can be very productive. So find those little chunks of time in your day. It could be while you're drinking your coffee in the morning or while your kids are having their afternoon snack. Those little 20 minute chunks, even 15 minute chunks can really add up. My final tip is to outsource what you do not enjoy or like doing. And that can be as simple as if you don't like doing quilt math, then buy a quilt pattern that has the math already done for you. There is no rule that you have to modify or come up with your own quilt patterns. If you don't like to quilt, you can send your, your tops out to a long arm and get them done. And that will free up that time of basting or loading it on a long arm or quilting that you don't enjoy doing and you can make another top during that process. If you don't like making binding, you can buy it on Etsy. There are people who make binding out of all kinds of fabrics and bias or straight grain. You can buy it and just plop it right onto your quilt. If you hate cutting, you can buy pre-cuts and only work with pre-cuts or you can buy one of those fancy cutting machines where it has the the dies that you load in and it out pops these amazing pre-cut quilt blocks. Being a productive quilter isn't something that is mandatory or something that you should necessarily strive for. Not everyone wants to make 25 quilts in a couple of months and that's okay. But if you do want to make a couple more quilts a year or find more time to dedicate to yourself for your mental and emotional health, then I hope these tips helped you. There are a couple of other videos popping up. One is a playlist to all of my quilt tutorials, and the other one is a video suggestion that YouTube thinks that you will love. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Happy quilting! And it cleverly uses a splint, a, 